You're tuning into an episode of the Redefining Society podcast, hosted by Marco Cappelli. Let's face it, the future is now. We live in a hybrid analog digital society, and we must stop ignoring it or pretending that technology is not affecting us. The line between the physical and virtual worlds has become a figment of our imagination. On it, we are continually performing a dangerous balancing act, juggling convenience, privacy, freedom, security, technology, society, culture, and even the future of humanity. There is no better place than here, and no better time than now to muse on our relationship with technology and how to redefine what society means in this new age. BugCrowd's award-winning platform combines actionable contextual intelligence with the skill and experience of the world's most elite hackers to help leading organizations identify and fix vulnerabilities, protect customers, and make the digitally connected world a safer place. Learn more at bugcrowd.com. Black Cloak provides concierge cybersecurity protection to corporate executives and high net worth individuals to protect against hacking, reputational loss, financial loss, and the impacts of a corporate data breach. Learn more at blackcloak.io. Hello, everybody. This is Marco Ciappelli, Redefining Society podcast on ITSP Magazine, Podcast Network. As you know, here we talk about, on this show, about technology and society and how each one affects the other. And there is not a single episode lately on this channel that we don't talk about artificial intelligence. <laughs> and today we're actually connected with something that is really dear to my heart. I come from the world of advertising and branding and personal branding. It's something that is really, really, really important nowadays. And I'm so glad to have Vlad on the show. I'm not going to attempt his last name. I don't want to chop it. He's going to say it himself. And uh, he, he is an expert. He's very well known um, on social media. He's worked really hard to create a following. And he's going to share some tips with all of us that are trying to to be relevant and uh, in, in, with our expertise. Because you can be an expert, but if nobody knows that you are, we're going to have a problem. So, Vlad, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you on. Hi, Marco. It is a pleasure to be on your podcast and many thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor. And I, I think for those that knows who you are, uh, they, you know, they'll be happy to hear some, some of your stories and perspective on the, on the topic. And for those that don't know who you are, give us a little background. Who is Vlad? Yeah, uh, I have more than 15 years of international experience with a pro track record of guiding executives to, and top brands worldwide to initiate change, drive growth, and position brands as market leaders in their industries. I am regarded as one of the world's leading digital transformation and marketing influencers, thought leaders, keynote speakers, startup advisors, and internet personalities. Uh, I'm recognized as one of the brightest minds in digital transformation, and, and I continue to play a pivotal role in maximizing top brand success. Uh, uh, my expertise has made me a popular choice as a keynote speaker for corporate events. And based on my strong performance, I'm currently ranked as number one uh, social media, marketing, and the retail thought leader by Sync360. Uh, I said on the advisory Board of the United States AI Institute, United States Cybersecurity Institute, and United States Data Science Institute. You know, uh, I also serve on the advisory council of Harvard Business Review, and uh, I'm also a, a, a mentor at UCLA and the School of Management, Abu Dhabi SME Hub, uh, TechStars, uh, and uh, um, many many uh, accelerators throughout the world, uh, and. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm very delighted to uh, travel all over the world to deliver my keynote speeches. I work with uh, uh, so many speakers bureaus throughout the world, uh, from Los Angeles to Sydney. And uh, I have been featured in Forbes, uh, Bloomberg, uh, Business Insider, Market Watch, uh, Yahoo Finance, um, Irish Tech News, WellBiz Magazine, many renowned media outlets. And uh, last year, I spoke at the Global Marketing Summit, where uh, uh, I'm listed as a speaker 
alongside Professor Philip Kotler. And I'm also a judge at the Webby Awards, and, and I'm an associate member of the uh, International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences in New York City. Uh, I also, I'm also a board judge at uh, Gartner Marketing Communication Awards, and uh, I also mentor startups at Plug and Play Tech Center, EMEA, and uh, take off Istanbul Startup Summit, you know? Wow. Uh, Do you have time yes. to eat, to sleep? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, we are so many heads, you know, I, we are so many heads. <laughs> I'm also a career mentor at the University of Westminster. I have been recognized among top 100 marketing speakers by Engage, and I won uh, like more than 100 global awards. Uh, I'm invited to many summits to speak, uh, to mentor startups, uh, to uh, judge awards, you know, so I'm very proud. Uh, to be at the forefront of marketing excellence because uh, I, I enjoy connecting with my audiences, building relationships, and emotional connection has been the driving force behind my growth because uh, I have a, a strong bond with my uh, community, you know, because I was uh, uh, from 2014 to 2020, I was just uh, uh, active on Twitter, building my community. I knew that if I was going to put in the work, this uh, building my community on Twitter would uh, open so many doors, you know. So nowadays, um, the market is a decision maker. The market decides who is uh, what is good and bad. So market decided that I'm a world-renowned marketing thought leader. I'm a practitioner. I constantly reinvent myself. I'm very consumer-centric, audience-centric. And uh, I build a great experience with my audiences, with my followers, with my consumers, you know. So as Amazon uh, built, uh, built a great experience with uh, its consumers, Amazon has been consumer-centric. Amazon has always reinvented itself. Um, Amazon has always been experimental. And Jeff Bezos has always been actually patient. Uh, so I think these ingredients uh, have also, uh, can also have also been applied to my business because uh, I have always been inspired by Amazon's growth at uh, how, to what extent they listen to their consumers and uh, social media uh, many brands and many people and executives think that uh, social media is a talking platform you know it's about listening platform you know you have to yeah. listen to your consumers you have to humanize your brand you know so what does it mean that before the internet uh, uh, brands we are not in communication with their, their consumers you know everyone was pushing their message on tv on billboards in magazines so consumers did not have a voice, you know. So uh, it is the first time in the history marketing and communication where consumers have a voice, you know. Con consumers have a reaction in, yeah. on the internet. So it's so, so true. It, it's a, It's. I'm gonna stop you for a second. Is it, there is yeah. this. It's 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 a two way street nowadays, right? Yes. So it's interactive. You can't really lie anymore as. You know, you, you used to be like because it was just a message of a big corporation of a brand to to other people. Now, as you say, you are more transparent and also you need to get back. It's almost like in a, a, a constant re relationship and conversation with your with your consumers. So Absolutely. how is technology? I mean, you mentioned Amazon, which is always at the forefront of you know, yes. creating algorithms and, and promoting in a human and technical way. So today we were going to talk about AI and how it can help personal brand. Many people are scared of it. They're scared that they're going to take their persona away. I don't see it that way. What's your, what's your take on that? Can you leverage it? Absolutely, AI? Marco. You know, it is, it is clear that uh, AI has started taking so many people's jobs, you know. Uh, so... 85 million jobs will be replaced by AI by 2025. 85 million jobs. And uh, 375 million people will switch to other careers by 2030, you know. Uh, AI's uh, contribution to global GDP will be in the region of $15.7 trillion by 2030. Just imagine, you know. It is the fourth industrial revolution. Most the most trailblazing technology, the most trailblazing technology, you know. And how is and, this uh, effective, the, our brand, our persona? Are we going yeah. to also be substituted by, by yeah, an avatar? So just imagine that uh, 
uh, no, nobody will need copywriters in the future because AI will, will, will be doing what copyright, copywriters are doing, you know? So uh, if marketers have built their personal brands, they will not be disrupted by AI because marketers who have strong personal brands will be in, uh, will be in a high demand sought after by the world because marketers have emotional connection with the world, you know? Emotional connection is uh, what sets you apart nowadays, Marco, you know? Mm, emotional true. connection. But for example, Starbucks has emotional connection with its consumers. Nike has emo emotional connection with its consumers. Harley Davidson has emotional connection with its consumers because Harley Davidson has this amazing community, Harley Owners Group, H-O-G, you know? So 700,000 riders go to Stargis in South Dakota annually where they attend festival together. So Harley Davidson brings community together, community together, you know? Uh, Starbucks brings community together. Nike brings community together. Airbnb uh, shares uh, uh, consumers uh, stories on social media because they put uh, consumers together, you know? So if, uh, if uh, brands uh, don't build strong communities, they will not be, they should not be in business, you know? Because I believe that uh, building emotional connection with your consumers is what sets you apart. Even, even uh, uh, AI, of course, nobody know. It, it's not about, uh, it's, it's all about being known versus not being known, you know? So mm -hmm. if you are known, it is your ultimate competitive advantage in the digital age, you know? In the age of AI and automation. So you leverage social media to to be known. I mean, and, and a lot of brands are doing that. Some for some is more natural because they do have already a community even before social media. But but with social media, you can really keep the community together. But you you need to be honest and interact with them. So have you seen other company that maybe you know without without naming them, that's okay. Some example of what could bring a failure to a good brand that didn't jump on the social media, didn't jump on the on this community built online. Well, uh, Marco, you know, we are, uh, I believe that we are in web, web 2.5 experience nowadays because I don't see that, uh, I don't see that so every social media network is, is built in blockchain, no, I mean, but uh, in, uh, we are in Web 2.5 experience, you know? So what is happening nowadays is so many brands uh, struggle with uh, storytelling, struggle with mm -hmm. connecting with their consumers, uh, struggle with uh, solving consumers' problems online. Because I'm an uh, I'm a, I'm a award judge at top uh, marketing award ceremonies throughout the world, you know? Uh, and I can see to what extent uh, brands connect with their consumers is a digital age nowadays, you know. Majority of brands are selfish, you know. They they share content that is in their best interest, you know. Mm. And only tiny minority of companies and organizations publish content that is in their followers' best interest, you know. It's all about humanizing your brand. It's all about co connecting with your consumers. It's all about uh, uh, building relationship with their consumers, you know. So... Well, how, how Elon Musk built uh, Tesla, right? Because uh, Tesla has never depended on advertising, you know? Tesla does not even have an advertising department, Tesla, you know? Because Elon Musk directly co uh, communicates with millions of consumers on Twitter, directly communicates, you know? Consumer connection is of paramount importance, Marco, you know? Yeah. So uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs need to put a human face on their brands, you know? So you do need that ambassador, as they like to call it nowadays. But well, as you can see, every, every owner of Tesla is a brand advocate, brand ambassador right. on Twitter. Because they share their car pics on Twitter 
it is uh, it spreads like wildfire and everyone knows that uh, uh tesla is dominant and we we know we don't remember anybody from the traditional automakers where their executives directly we don't even it. we don't even know who is the ceo of yes we, we don't company. yes we we don't know anybody from ford general motors bmw because their executives depend on traditional advertising you know and do you do you feel like this is uh, this is something that and I don't know, I'm just a guess probably that Elon Musk did it intentionally because it's kind of like a marketing forward thinker or it just came natural to him because who he is. Because vision, some people vision. may not be good in communicating. That's where yeah, I want to go. He's a visionary leader, Marco. Uh, Elon is a visionary leader, you know. So it uh, resulted in a Tesla's transformation and success because he... Uh, Tesla does not uh, waste billions of dollars on advertising, you know. Right. Instead, instead, it costs zero dollars <laughs> Elon Musk to tell his story through Twitter, you know. Got it, got it. Because so Elon, Elon has more than 100 and 120 million followers on Twitter. It costs right. zero dollars to build your brand nowadays. It's a digital age because tweeting is free. Downloading Twitter application is free. Distributing content is free. And what is a, like a brand's excuse that they don't want to connect with their consumers in a digital age because consumers no longer trust adver advertisements, you know? One out of three consumers has ad blocker on their devices. More than 700 million consumers have ad blockers on mobile devices. More than 700 million Consumers, just imagine that uh, brands are wasting billions of dollars on advertising where consumers no longer trust ads, you know, and no longer believe ads, you know. So it needs to be a spontaneous choice, like a, yes, a choice so, of so, the consumer to follow somebody that is relevant, somebody that has a personal brand. Then in this case, it reflects to the value of their company. So it, it kind of goes the other way around, right? Yeah, so, so Marco, we are no longer in B2B or B2C. It is age to age where human beings want to do business with human beings, not companies, you know? But like majority, that. majority of executives, majority of brands are in their ivory towers and they mm. market like it is 1995, 2005. <laughs> they disregard consumers. They, they disregard communication. They disregard social media and they go out of business like Blockbuster, you know? Right. Is there, is there like a... Okay, so let's say that you're not the most communicative person. It doesn't come spontaneous. I mean, you're, you're a great speaker. You're a great talker. I'm sure you, you do a great job in staying in touch and being human with your followers. If someone has not... It doesn't come easy, let's say. Uh, what, what are your tips and advice to develop your personal brand when it may not be coming? So uh, well, uh, there, are some uh, there are some elements that can truly drive your success forward. First of all, is to what kind of mindset do we have? You know, what kind of mindset? Are we curious? Are we open minded? Do we have exponential mindset? You know, exponential mindset. We need to become more curious, more open-minded, you know. And but unfortunately, uh, still many executives uh, put their MBA degrees on a pedestal, and they think that their MBA degrees will bring uh, consumers to their brands. You know, it is false. It is it it does not work. You know, because a degree gives you nothing in a global marketplace. You know, so nowadays in 2023, the web is the web is your CV. You know. So web is your CV, you know. Mm. So uh, uh, education was the only bench benchmark set years ago, set years ago. But but uh, everything has changed. Consumer behavior has changed. Internet has democratized opportunities. Now consumers have a voice. Consumers have a reaction, you know. So cons consumers tell each other word of mouth is very powerful. Uh, and brands need to build great uh, build brands need to build great experiences with consumers in the digital age you know
brands need to reinvent themselves constantly. Brands need to be more experimental. Brands need to be more patient, you know? So when it comes to building a personal brand, I believe that uh, it's all about uh, uh, publishing content nowadays, you know, because uh, consumers no longer trust ads and the only uh, way to win is storytelling. Storytelling is what sells your product, you know? Uh, ultimately, uh, quality is uh, quality is what people, what consumers buy. So consumers are always right. The consumers are always right. And uh, attention, attention is in a virtual world, not in a physical world. You know, virtual world. Uh, Mar uh, Mar Marco, you know, you mentioned that uh, this device, this device is a game changer. You know, this device is a reason why billion dollar companies have been built in the recent decade, Airbnb, Spotify, Uber, because speed and convenience win all the time, you know? So what has what is happening nowadays is that Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, uh, and TikTok, Twitter have become new uh, BBC, CNN, Bloomberg, you know? It is a so source of information, source of information, you know? So you everyone needs... Uh, to act like a media company, Marco. Everyone needs to act like a media company. You just need to imagine that you are Forbes of your industry and you are expected to uh, provide enlightening, informative, entertaining content to your audiences to win in the long term, you know? So whether I build a personal brand or executives build their personal brand, everyone needs to become more curious more open-minded, create content at scale, to set up podcasts, you know, to invite best expertise to their consumers, you know, because our consumers expect to get informed, to get educated, to get entertained, not, be, but majority of brands are transactional, transactional. So consumers are tired of their sales pitches, what is in the executives and top brands' best interest, you know. I love I love when you said every company and every person it's a, it's a media company. I think that that summarizes exactly the core of putting yourself out there either as an individual or as a company and and create content that is relevant, that is shareable, that people can use maybe and and amplify it in in different way now let me ask you this because we're talking also about ai what do you think about the use of or the future as you're so forward thinking about virtual influencer made ai avatars i know that there are virtual uh, account on on TikTok or Twitter, they have millions and millions of followers, and they know that is AI created, but they're still engaging. They're singer in South Korea. They are telling story. They're doing photo shooting. What what is your vision on that? How can we leverage that? Uh, uh, Marco, you know, I I believe that everyone was talking about metaverse last year, you know. <laughs> And there are nobody here. No, not this yes, year. There are eight, there are eight point one, eight point one billion people in the world. You know, five point six billion mobile users, five point two billion internet users, and four point nine billion social media users nowadays. You know, and and if a bread, if people are talking about metaverse, there are maybe seven people who are living in the metaverse nowadays, and there are. 4.9 billion people who use social media channels actively. So it is now or never for brands to connect with their consumers in the digital age and to humanize your their brands and to tell their stories. Marco, to tell their stories, you know, because storytelling is why Nike is Nike, why Apple is Apple, why storytelling is why Elon Musk has built his Tesla. Right? Because uh, Elon uh, uh, lives in the future. Elon is a forward thinker. I Elon communicates, you know? So, so can, can you have an Elon that is AI, that is not Elon? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, 
uh, I believe that AI is the most revolutionary technology nowadays. It is uh, every anyone's uh, ultimate competitive advantage, Marco. Ultimate competitive advantage, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's it is not about uh, it it is it is not about it is not a matter about if you use uh, AI or not. It is your if your competitor is is using AI, your competitor is going to drive you out of business. You know, a, 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 I I still meet so many executives and they are very hesitant to use and to deploy AI uh, in their daily operations. You know daily operations because uh, marketing is no longer marketing without AI in 2023 personalization customer experience you know I mean uh, you can you can uh, make better strategic smarter decisions through uh, utilizing uh, AI technologies a on a daily basis you know to remain competitive and to stay ahead of the car you know and so be, be more personalized Uber, Uber is using Uber is using AI mm -hmm. extensively, extensively mm -hmm. in the in his, in their algorithms, uh, in their recommendations, in their personalization. You know, so uh, we need to we need to capitalize on data and AI just to listen to our consumers and to make better decisions. You know. And it sounds to me that it's reconnected with what you said at the beginning, which is you need to be one-on-one -on -one talking to your consumer, your followers. Yes. And yes. AI allows you to do it at scale, right? So you can personalize a message for a particular social demographic as a Starbucks while not having to use the same message that goes to everybody because not the same message works for you and for me and to someone else that is on another side of the world. So this th this is, I think, I don't know if, what you think about it, but I think this is a, one of the most relevant use of AI when it comes to marketing. I, I think that uh, Twitter's advantage is that it allows you to communicate with your, with your consumers on a one-on-one -on -one level, you know? It just, you, if you respond to everyone's tweet, just imagine that you are already winning. But if brands and, and executives and man, marketing managers don't create content, their competitors are creating content. So they are losing their consumers because they, they are very inactive, very inactive. And they still depend on traditional advertising and traditional marketing that no longer provide positive ROI, you know. Got it. No, it makes it makes sense, and that applies to the big corporation, and it applies to the individual uh, yeah, personal because, brand. Because tradi uh, uh, traditional marketing uh, is very expensive nowadays. I I would not say that traditional marketing is dead. You know, mm -hmm. it is overpriced. Overpriced, Marco. It's overpriced. overpriced. Okay. Overpriced. That's a good point. So what is underpriced? Facebook ads, uh, YouTube ads. You know, TikTok ads. Uh, uh, Instagram ads, you know, so uh, we, which which uh, sports has been the most dominant sport in the last uh, twenty years in the United States? NFL. NFL has become NFL because of capitalizing on advertising. You know, who was the biggest advertiser on Google AdWords from two thousand two thousand five? Amazon. Amazon and Jeff Bezos capitalized on Google AdWords. Uh, to be the number one advertiser on Google AdWords in, in its five, first five years. And Amazon became Amazon because of Google AdWords, mm -hmm. you know? Which brands were the most, uh, the biggest advertisers on TV in the 70s and 80s? Procter & Gamble and Budweiser. They have mm -hmm. capitalized on TV advertising to, uh, to help their brands be to become biggest brand in their industries, you know? Okay. Which sports, which sports were the biggest sports in the United States in the 40s and 50s when the radio wa was in its heyday, you know? Horse racing, baseball, and boxing because they distributed content on the radio, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have transitioned from radio to TV, from TV to mobile, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. mobile uh, is uh, everyone's competitive. As I mentioned, 5.6 billion mobile users, you know, 5.6 billion people. People yeah. use social media. My my tweets 
my tweets used to reach 40 million people annually. I never spent millions of dollars or thousands of dollars uh, on advertising and promoting my social media profiles. But organic growth was decisive, you know, connecting mm -hmm. uh, emotional connection with my community was of paramount importance, building emotional connection, you know. So I, I turned uh, a strong follow a following into a strong community on Twitter because as uh, brands uh, build strong communities and they depend on communities, also influencers build strong communities across social media channels. So they um, depend on their hard work, on their persistence, on their communication. Uh, because uh, uh, traditional marketing uh, ma traditional marketing was one-way communication. Right. Tra uh, digital marketing and social media marketing is a two-way communication, Marco, two-way communication. So everyone, everyone needs to humanize their brands. They need to storytell. They need to get closer to their consumers, you know? So to, to, to wrap it up, maybe for people that are listening right now and they're like, okay, you know what? I understand what Vlad is saying. I want to get started. I don't have 10,000 followers, 100,000 of followers, but I believe that Vlad is right, that Marco and Vlad are having a great conversation. I want to act on that. What, what would be your, I don't know, maybe three tips for somebody getting started today to start building their personal brand on, on social media? Well, first of all, first of all, uh, they sh first uh, they need to connect with their consumers. You know, connect, con communication, gratitude. They need to show gratitude. You know, if, if you have two followers on Twitter, you you should still showing. You should still be showing gratitude. You know, you should be thankful to your followers. If you have even two followers, you know, mm -hmm. because I remember that in 2014. I had I had 100 200 300 followers but I was I was showing gratitude every time they were following me they were retweeting me liking my posts you know showing support you know so if someone uh, shows support that you create content you should show gratitude you know so mm -hmm. gratitude is a best attitude nowadays you know second we need to create content that is a uh, uh, in followers' best interest, you know, best interest. What does it mean that you, you should never send sales pitches, you know, that I'm selling this, I'm selling that, come to our website, book us, you know, because the world is tired of the sales pitches. So everybody disregards salespeople because salespeople are oriented on short-term goals, short-term success. We need to become brand builders. We need to become marketers instead of advertisers, you know. We need to become the greatest publisher of information. Just imagine that you, uh, uh, that uh, you run, uh, you, you you represent Forbes or big media companies. You know, you just need to imagine that you are supposed to publish information. What is trending nowadays in marketing, innovation, AI? You know, because I mean, I mean, uh, if you wanted to run TV, if you want to run uh, commer uh, commercials on TV. It is expensive. It costs money, right? If you want to buy billboards in the streets, it's expensive. It costs money, you know? If you want to advertise something on the radio, it is expensive. It costs money, you know? If you want to buy a, like a, a, a page in the newspaper or magazine, it's expensive. It costs money, you know? Social media is free. Social media is free. You can connect with billions of people if you create great content, you know? Yep. It takes time, but it takes time. But you know, Marco, we we live in a mobile. You can get now. some. Yeah, you can get something that does. If it doesn't take time, it's gonna cost you money. If it's not costing you money, yeah, so you're gonna have Elon to do it Musk, yourself. Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk uh, uh, succeeded against all odds, and uh, he turned all the tables because he was working like hell, hundred hour work weeks, hundred hour work weeks, hundred. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. And uh, Elon reinvested all his money into his ventures, and he used to borrow money for rent in 2008, you know? Sure. He used to borrow money in San Francisco when he was building Tesla and other brands, his SpaceX, you know? Because he did not have money for rent, so he used to borrow money for rent, you know? Right. 
So I guess uh, the lesson here, Vlad. Is, uh, but, uh, but Marco, nowadays, many people keep up with Jonas's. <laughs> you know, instead of, instead of reinvesting their money into their ventures, into their business, they go on vacations, they buy cars, they buy, uh, they buy luxury houses because they are short-term thinkers. We need to become long-term thinkers, you know. We need to start thinking in the long term to build something meaningful, you know. And if that, you want that, to build that comes to your personal brand too. Yes, if you want to build a personal brand, if you want to build your startup, if you want to uh I mean I, I never uh, 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 I I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I I don't come from a rich family. I did not have millions of dollars to invest into into building my personal brand, but but uh, uh, social media has opened the floodgates to open-minded people to build their personal brands at no cost, at, at, uh, at zero dollars. It costs zero dollars to build your personal brand, to build your business. It's time, it's time, it is time to find your passion, to connect with your consumers, to tell your story, to think in the long term to become more experimental, to build a great experience and uh, to reinvent yourself uh, constantly, you know? Well, you, you just finished the episode for me. That was a perfect, uh, perfect wrap and perfect ends of, uh, of this episode. Vlad, I want to thank you so much for, for your time, for sharing your experience and your knowledge. And uh, I want to invite all the people that are listening to my show that may know as many as the people that that they follow you to, you know, to subscribe maybe to, to my podcast and, uh, of course, to share it. And uh, I think there was a lot, a lot of interesting uh, point and tips that Vlad shared with us. So, again, yeah. thank you very much. Stay in touch and hopefully we'll, I'll have you again soon. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, many. Thank All you right. very much. Take care, Vlad. Bye, everybody. BugCrowd's award-winning platform combines actionable contextual intelligence with the skill and experience of the world's most elite hackers to help leading organizations identify and fix vulnerabilities, protect customers, and make the digitally connected world a safer place. Learn more at bugcrowd.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Redefining Society podcast, hosted by Marco Ciappelli. If you learned something new and this conversation made you think, then take a moment to rate this show and add it to your favorite podcast player. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this episode with your friends, family, and colleagues. We invite you to come back for more stories and follow Marco Ciappelli on his social media as he continues this journey into the future of our societies.